All right, so my name's Jing Lu, and I'm here to tell you a bit about how computers can help us address the issue of cancer. So my healthcare journey started about 10 years ago. I've been working in healthcare for the last 10 years. And about eight years ago, my best friend's mother was diagnosed and ultimately passed away from cancer. So what became something that was a career journey became very personal then. Um, worldwide, about one million people die of lung cancer. Um, and this is mostly concentrated in developed areas such as North America and China. We don't do anything, the diagnosis is only gonna spread worldwide and more people are gonna pass away of this curable disease. In the last 50 years, there's been a lot of medical technologies that advanced our understanding of cancer. However, the only thing we can do to kind of go and combat the scourge is to go in and use these technologies together to get an earlier diagnosis. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with lung cancer in the audience, but this is a disease that kills about 80% of the people that are diagnosed with it within five years. If we don't do anything about it, more people are gonna die and more people are going to go in and lose quality of life years. The only thing that we can do to help address this early is to catch lung cancer at a curable stage. When it's localized, you have a one in two chance of surviving your diagnosis. When it's uh, metastasized, you have a one in 20 chance of surviving the disease. So the great thing is this is a problem that can be solved with AI and big data. In the last 50 years, we've had larger data sets that are curated to address lung cancer. And we found that if you use low dose CT scans, you can actually find the cancer when it's the size of a dime, when it's still curable, as opposed to when it's grown to the size of a quarter, when it's not curable. Now, the United States government has recognized this, and starting 2014, they've started covering Medicare screening for low-dose CT scans. The problem is that the more people are screened, this is about 5 million people, the more people are going to light up with cancer. So just to kind of have you visualize and contextualize this, the screen on the left shows you about 1,000 people in a dark movie theater. Those three people are going to be the lives that we can cure and save with a lung cancer low-dose CT scan. The people on the right, 233 of them, are going to be the people who are going to light up as if they have lung cancer when they don't have the disease. Now, another way to contextualize this is, again, three people are going to be saved. 230 of them are going to look like they have a disease that they don't actually have. So this is a data mining problem, and this is an issue of a high rate of false positives. Now, the good th news is that we have a lot of data sets that we can go and use to address this problem. I specifically use the LIDC IDRI. I'm going to talk to you more about that later. But last year was the source of a $1 million data science bowl challenge. So if you can go and help me cure lung cancer, you can also win a $1 million. Right? So the, specifically data, uh, the specific data set that we're looking at has about 1,000 uh, scans, and about 157 of them are labeled with pathology and ground truth with a radiologist diagnosis of cancer versus no cancer. Now, when we apply our data mining algorithms to this disease, to this particular data set, we can actually identify and stratify who's high risk, who needs the treatment, and who's low risk, who's not likely to have the disease. So what kind of approaches can we take? Now, within data mining, within AI, there's a lot of different tools. And I'm going to specifically talk to you about two different tools, both decision trees and the C5.0 algorithm. Now, when we apply these data mining techniques to this disease, we can actually see that the three most predictive variables to diagnose a person with lung cancer versus no cancer is the volume of their nodules. So it doesn't matter that you have a lot of lung nodules. A lot of those things light up and it scares the patients, but that's actually not going to be cancer. It matters that the lung nodules are above three millimeters, again, the size of a dime, like I mentioned earlier. When it grows beyond that size, the proportion of people who have cancer versus no cancer rises. So you want to catch those lung nodules when they're large, and you want to also address them when they're early. So you want to go and give that more aggressive follow-up. It's high risk. Right? It doesn't matter what algorithm you use, it's consistent throughout. I applied different algorithms and you find the same result. My algorithm was about to achieve an 85.7% accuracy, which is clinically valuable for physicians and patients. The gold standard is about 90%, but at 80%, clinicians can use this to help educate their patients about their risk with uh, this disease. So if you look at the key points from what I've learned, using a computer and using the data mining tools, 90% of the predicted outcome came from those three variables. What is the volume of the lung nodule? Um, um, where is it located? What is the size that it's growing at? And I applied about five different algorithms to get that, again, 85.71% um, accuracy. And I'm going to apply more algorithms as we go through, such as neural nets and other AI methods. Now, I think, again, I'm not the only one working on this worldwide. About 10 companies have been founded, and a lot of uh, senior technology companies have also invested in this field. So worldwide, if we pool all of our resources, I think we can all make a big difference in this disease. I think, again, if you have any questions, you can definitely reach out to me for the specific methods that I used. And together, I think we can cure cancer in our lifetime. Thank you.